<laughs> thank you, thank you, there, uh, Jeremy. Well, thank you all for uh, joining us here today. Um, I know many of you uh, from my previous uh, career as the Commissioner of the Department of Natural Resources. I'm now, of course, the Executive Director of the Save the Bounty Waters campaign. And uh, we're delighted to have you here today. We want to talk about the uh, expected Twin Metals uh, mine plan of operations being dropped on the state soon. Uh, Twin Metals, uh, uh, wholly owned subsidiary of Anafagasta, is going to be delivering a lump of coal to Minnesota right before Christmas. And it is our request and uh, advice to the governor that he should not accept that lump of coal. Uh, this is a significant and threatening development for the Bounty Waters. It's the culmination of two years of effort on behalf of the Trump administration and Twin Metals uh, Minnesota. Uh, lobbyists in D.C. have spent more than a million dollars since 2016 to corrupt and uh, subvert this process. Uh, the goal of the federal government and of Twin Metals is to push this project into the hands of the state and make the state deal with this project that was terminated uh, three years ago. They know that should this land in the pocket of the state, the state standards are not adequate to protect the boundary waters, and the uh, plan could ultimately be approved and again uh, devastate the boundary waters. Twin Metals and the federal government did this by putting politics over science, over science and the public good, by renewing leases that have been rightfully canceled in 2016. They were canceled by the U.S. Forest Service in 2016, who found that after a lengthy public review and scientific analysis, determined that they mine posed unacceptable risks to the boundary waters. Uh, subsequent to that, the Trump administration uh, canceled a review, another environmental review that was ongoing. It was 20 months into a 24 month process. They canceled that study and have refused to turn over the reports that that study generated, even though we know that there's more than 60 pages of findings. Uh, that they've already uh, developed. Of course, we expect those findings uh, would support the termination of the leases. Uh, if they were supportive of continuing with the leases, we would expect that they would have provided that. So we believe that uh, not only did the federal government uh, through the Forest Service terminate those leases in 2016, but substantial additional work after that uh, substantiated that process. Uh, those reports have been uh, hidden from the public. They've been unwilling to provide those reports, even to Congress, uh, through uh, powerful chair people uh, in appropriations and elsewhere. And uh, uh, they contain very important information that looks at many of the different aspects of a mine project in that area. Uh, clearly, the million dollars that Anafagasa has spent on lobbying in D.C. since 2016 uh, has paid off, and they have been given one large Christmas present. Uh, using this deception, Twin Metals and the federal government have negated and corrupted a full environmental uh, review that is a critical part of the federal process. By now putting in a state process, the mine will be subject to a very narrow and prescriptive set of state rules that A, allow for the pollution of air and water quality. The standards don't prohibit pollution of air and water quality, they set a standard for what that uh, is allowable. It does not account for the process, the state process does not account for economic impact outside of the mine area. So negative uh, economic development as a result of the mine moving in there is not considered in the permitting process. It does not consider the consequences on people who currently earn their job uh, working through wilderness outfitters, wilderness uh, uh, providers, uh, YMCA camps, uh, the other uh, you know, homeowners and property values that will uh, diminish because of the uh, impact of a mine in the neighborhood, and a number of other considerations that simply are not brought into the process. It's a very narrow set of uh, standards that are used for permitting, and even those standards allow for degradation. We know enough about the project right now to know that it should not proceed. Uh, again, when it was terminated uh, by the Forest Service, uh, when they looked at those 1966 leases, uh, the impact they might have in the boundary waters, they said no, the impact of mining uh, in this area poses an unacceptable risk to the boundary waters. We don't need to go through this process again. The proposed mine is adjacent to the South Bushby River and Birch Lake in a very water-rich uh, and intact forest ecosystem. It's next to America's most popular wilderness, the largest wilderness east of the Rockies and north of the Everglades. All drainage from this project in this area goes into the boundary waters and subsequently into the Voyager National Park. We know the footprint of this project will be at least a square mile in size, which is all currently now 
virgin forests or, or intact forests and, uh, and wetlands. And so they will be clearing that area for both the uh, mine operation site as well as for the large 430 acre tailings pile that they will be creating. This tailings pile, 430 acres in size, two thirds of a square mile, 120 feet tall in a landscape that's relatively flat. It's going to be a permanent blight on that landscape that will be leaching uh, toxic waste into the groundwater and surface water permanently. The robust economy that depends on the wilderness, the uh, high quality air and water, the high quality fish and wildlife resources is going to take a hit because none of those things will survive in the presence and the vicinity of an industrial mining complex. And once the boundary waters is polluted and all this water drains into the boundary waters, there is no remediation. You can't go into the boundary waters with a, with a water treatment plant and repurify the water that's now got high levels of sulfate in it. You can't bring in machinery to clear up a spill that happens uh, in the boundary waters. The damage that happens in the boundary waters is, is forever. So the Trump administration has corrupted the environmental process to force this project on Minnesota for political reasons, overlooking the science. And Minnesota, Minnesota's elected leaders are now the people who have to decide what to do. We're here today to call on them to use sound science and good environmental policy through an open public process to make sure that boundary waters is protected. 70% of Minnesotans don't want copper nickel mining anywhere near the boundary waters. They come from all walks of life. They are hunters and anglers. They are local residents as well as residents of other states. They are business owners and kids whose lives have been transformed by the power of the wilderness through camps and uh, uh, individual expeditions. I want you to hear from some of those folks uh, now who are also uh, imp uh, impacted, will be impacted by this negative uh, impacts of this project. So they can tell you directly what uh, their perspective is on uh, this project. I'm going to start first off with uh, Lucas Leaf, who is the executive director of Sportsman for the Boundary Waters. Thanks, Tom. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. My name is Lucas Leaf, and I'm the executive director of Sportsman for the Boundary Waters. I also sit on the uh, Minnesota Board of Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, who is a uh, key partner in the work that we do here to protect the Boundary Waters. Uh, Sportsman for the Boundary Waters works to protect the integrity of the Boundary Waters and its watersheds for huntable and fishable populations of fish and wildlife uh, through advocacy and education. Uh, we also lead a coalition of hunters, anglers, and conservation organizations uh, dedicated to protecting our wild places like the Boundary Waters. The Boundary Waters is a vast boreal forest consisting of interconnected lakes, streams, and wetlands uh, that provides some of the best fishing and hunting uh, the world has to offer. Hunters and anglers travel to the Boundary Waters for a one-of-a-kind uh, chance to pursue lake trout, walleye, smallmouth bass, northern pike, white-tailed deer, rough grouse, and black bear in a true backcountry wilderness landscape. The Superior National Forest, uh, which houses the BWCA, holds 20% of the fresh water in the entire national forest. Again, that's 20% of the fresh water in 3 million of 193 million acre national forest system. That is a staggering number and a resource that shouldn't be taken lightly. It's a resource that drives a robust econ outdoor economy in the Arrowhead and a resource that is vital to us as Minnesotans and to the hunting and fishing opportunities that the BWCA provides. Uh, Twin Meadows' proposed copper nickel project would sit at the doorstep of the Boundary Waters and directly threaten surrounding fish and wildlife habitat. A byproduct of copper nickel mining is acid mine drainage, or AMD for short. AMD lowers pH levels and exposes fish and other aquatic organisms to toxic heavy metals. Pollution from copper nickel mining would exacerbate the mercury problem, one of the toxic heavy metals that's a byproduct, in the region and not only threaten the BWCA's fisheries, but also Canadian waters that themselves support significant commercial and recreational fisheries. Wetlands would be destroyed by backfilling for the mine footprint itself, which is something Tom mentioned, not to mention a total habitat loss within the footprint of the proposed mine area, thus decimating local fishing and hunting opportunities. It's disappointing that it's come to this point where the protection of our natural resources is a thing of the past. We are in the age of acting in the present and are ignoring the future consequences of our actions. The stark reality is we stand to lose vast wilderness landscapes like the Boundary Waters. As Tom said, state standards simply do not work here. So the buck stops with Governor Walz. 
and he can and should protect the boundary waters by halting any of, the, of his department's actions to per permit the proposed Twin Mountains project, and should demand the completion of the canceled federal mineral, mineral withdrawal study. Hunters, anglers, and all outdoor recreationists support the protection of the boundary waters, and ask that the governor, our elected officials, and state agencies do the same. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Julia Ruel from Kids from the Mountain Waters. Hello, uh, my name is Julia Ruel, and I'm a senior of Antioch High School and a board member of Kids from the Boundary Waters. I've been taking trips to the Boundary Waters with my family since I was about eight years old. And these trips are some of my fondest memories of, as a child and always the highlight of my summers. And now, reflecting on the childhood of camping in the Boundary Waters, I recently realized just how relevant the wilderness has been to my life. Even as I battled brain cancer during my sophomore year, I relied on lessons that I learned in a canoe. During my cancer treatment, the Boundary Waters was always on my mind as a happy place I could go to to calm my mind and body. I would always imagine that I was just sitting on a rock, watching the sunset reflect off of placid, beautiful waters, and then I could feel much more stable and calm. Furthermore, resilience and balance that I learned in the Boundary Waters has helped me weather uncomfortable challenges in my diagnosis and treatments. After all, balancing a canoe on my shoulders while taking care not to trip <coughs> on the roots while, um, while portaging requires an immense amount of focus. Just as balancing my education and social life while taking four hour trips daily to get radiation treatments required a precise amount of focus and balance. The summer after my treatment, I earned a trip to the Boundary Waters with three friends and no adults through an essay contest at Ely Outfitting Company. Here in the Boundary Waters, I felt I was finally able to be myself again, separate from the girl with cancer as in the Boundary Waters, labels melt away. The Boundary Waters has a unique ability to connect people, especially as teenagers now rarely have the opportunity to distance ourselves from social media and phones and really feel grounded like we can in the Boundary Waters. It was at this time that I connected with Joseph Goldstein, another cancer survivor, Boundary Waters enthusiast, as he launched Kids for the Boundary Waters. Through this organization, I have now traveled to D.C. three times to advocate for the protection of ground waters, backed by over a hundred other teams from across the country. Thus, I stand here today as just one representative of a massive group, of a massive group that firmly shares my same passion. We have poured out innumerable heart-wrenching stories of growth, healing, and understanding. As youth, we insist that the long-term implications of this mind weigh heavily. Just like our parents, we hope to someday share the treasure of the Boundary Waters with our children. And we are terrified of a future in which wild places no longer exist due to the repercussions of decisions of today. We see it as a duty to protect the Boundary Waters. Because if this mind goes forward, Boundary Waters will suffer irreversible change to its pristine and untainted waters. And this is destruction that I would regret for all of my life. And with that, I'd like to welcome Steve Fragus to share some thoughts. Thanks, Julia. And I, I want to say that Julia is part of this, the reason why so many of us, a few generations down the line, are so dedicated to preserving this place because really we're doing it for the, this, this group of people that's going to enjoy it for a lot longer than we have left here to do it. We've had our, our wonderful experiences in the Boundary Waters. Uh, I came to Ely in 1975 as a, as a young graduate student in limnology, worked for EPA for uh, two summers, and, uh, and eventually ended up opening our own business in 1979 with my wife, Nancy. And so we, we celebrated our 40th year in business this year. Um, my, my daughter, Ellie, is taking over that business, another generation moving into, this, um, into the prosperity that really Ely has. Ely's a unique place. Many of you have been there, end of the road, dependent on this beautiful wilderness for all of, all of us to be prosperous, all of us in business. Not just myself, but uh, lots of businesses support the campaign in, uh, in the campaign to save the Boundary Waters because they realize that without the pristine nature of the boundary waters being preserved, our business is in severe threat. So um, uh, we're a small business. Uh, we employ 
uh, a FTE of 30. We have 20 full-time employees year-round. We get up to about 50 in the summer. So we're a significant impact on the, on the economics of the, uh, the local Ely economy. But we're not the only ones. The, uh, Ely's about mucklucks and dog sledding in the winter. It's about canoes and it's about retirement and moving to Ely as a place to get away from the hubbub of uh, modern society. So we've, uh, if you look at the industries that are prosperous in Ely, one of them is construction. Construction people are hard to find. If you want to buy, build a cabin or build a house or get a plumbing job done or an electrical job, it's hard to find somebody. Everybody's extremely busy. People are moving to Ely and it's a prosperous place because it's, because it's on the edge of this great wilderness. Without the wilderness, all of these businesses are going to be threatened. My 20 full-time employees, their families, are uh, what we worry about in addition to the generations that come that will enjoy this great wilderness. So, so uh, economically, uh, Ely is uh, in, really in the balance. Uh, we, do we convert to a boom and bust economy based on mining and leave, thus leave the rest of us behind to go somewhere else or to go out of business? and then have 20 years of mining and leave a disastrous economy? Or do we stick with what we have that's sustainable and prosperous? And we're part of that, we want to save it. That's, my, that's what I'd like to say today. I'm